Do not take a DNA test if you're adopted, unless you're prepared to turn your life upside down. Hey Credos, it's been two weeks and one day since Sam and I looked at the results of our DNA tests. In just a minute, I'm gonna step you through the process from spitting in the tubes to reading the results. But I'm also here to fill you in on some of the aftermath. So today we're gonna to do the promised DNA test. This is my husband, Sam. Hi. And we're gonna do this together. Now I'm adopted and I don't know anything about my biological history. So it's gonna be a complete surprise. Except that she is redheaded. Except that I am redheaded. Sam knows a lot more of his genealogy than I do. I have adopted my adopted family's genealogy. What I really am ethnically, we're not sure. As I said in the adoption vlog, I got this, my husband gave this to me for Mother's Day. And it's the end of August and I still haven't used it because I'm scared. I gave my husband one for Father's Day, so we decided we would do this together. And pretty much every week since then he says, are we going to do it? And I'm, yeah, we'll do it uh, later. So today we're going to start the first step today. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have two different kits here. and. I don't have my glasses on, but this is Ancestry DNA, and this is 23andMe DNA. We have both, because I guess they give you different information. This is going to be the official unboxing of the Ancestry DNA. Ready? Inside, we have the booklet, this thing, and this thing, and, and the mailing box. So that's what's in here. A little vial, and a little fluidy thing. That's the technical term. If you need proof of our middle-agedness, we had to stop to both go get our glasses to be able to read appropriately. So we've written down our name and our activation codes. It's now, oh. Now you fill the, we fill the tube. tube of saliva to the black wavy line. Now if you've ever had a DNA test, Will you comment below and tell me what you found out that was the most interesting or what the coolest thing about your DNA test was? Eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum for 30 minutes. Do not eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum for 30 minutes before you start spitting into this thing. We're going to spit up to the wavy line. This is going to be beautiful. Not counting bubbles. That's all I got. All I got is bubbles. This is such a romantic bonding thing, isn't it, babe? Always. Can you kiss 30 minutes before? Uh, that, she does that mix DNA if you kiss? DNA. Don't kiss either. Do not overfill. I'm telling you, it's underlined. I don't, I don't, I got no worse bit. <laughs> Until it is at or just above, but do not overfill. If it's just above, is it overfilled? How do you spit so fast? I'm almost there. I can feel it. Maybe I should have drunk a lot of stuff like a half hour ago to hydrate. This is the longest fourth tea. That is more than a fourth teaspoon, I swear. So proudly. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah, you're good. Am I good? Yeah. See that? Spit, people. Saliva. This is what you're going for. Funnel off. Place the funnel with the cap. Tightly screw on the enclosed cap. I think it releases the blue liquid when you get it on Ooh, the Ooh, look at that. Does that, pres oh, look at that. Look at the blue. Oh, look at the blue. It's like, I guess it punctures the lid and the blue yeah, fluid goes shake down. Shake for five seconds. I don't know. Does that preserve it or? Yeah, that's what it's Makes for. it fancy? It's Fancy to preserve spit. it. Stabilizes. Stabilizing. Stabilizing solution, that's what it's called. Okay. Stabilizers so that your spit stays awesome. Put it in this bag. Yeah. The collection collection bag. Got a little okay, you open it, stick it in. Your yeah. cap to seal the collection bag. Put bag into return mailer. Don't forget to activate test online. Okay. So we peel this off and seal this up. Sign sealed delivered. I'm excited! Am I Irish or Scottish? Either one, I'm okay with. If it's like Wisconsin redhead, I don't know what I'll do about that. These are ready to ship, and then we just go online, which I'll do afterwards, and activate, which I guess probably just tells them we're sending our stuff, right? Yeah. 
links links us to our yeah so then you were to saliva. send the stuff it links me to my saliva all right so that's done for ancestry dna unboxing number two this is the 23andme kit open are you ready <gasps> it's a booklet again it's a little oh, it's a little booklet and then we've got oh good we get to spit some more no food drink chewing gum smoking no French kissing, that's mixing the DNA, that's a no-no, no, because who do you know who you are if you do that? We're excited for you to begin this journey. They're excited too. So we can be excited together. I have no more spit in me, how am I going to do this? Oh my gosh, we should not have done two in a row, honey. No, no, no sound effects. That's how you get the spit out. Oh. Pretend you're sucking on uh, candy and no, no. That's the technique. Oh my gosh, there's nothing in here. He's so much faster. Show off. Saliva so makes for good digestion. Guess my biological family doesn't have good digestion. I guess not. Yeah, I'm pumped. Oh my gosh. I'm there. so hard. My mouth is so dry. Is your mouth dry? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can't share saliva with you. <laughs> it kind of destroyed the test. Okay, I'm almost there. I feel better about myself as a human being. Yes. I feel better about my biology. <laughs> my biological capabilities. Yeah, you're there. Am I there? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I want to get. I want to be rejected. No, <laughs> no it was not you're good enough. Okay. Now you just take this, and it's gonna puncture. Oh, okay. So it's got this one's got like a, just a little plastic skin. So when you close it, it's gonna puncture on that, and then drop the yeah. the not blue fluid, right? Right? Yeah, not blue fluid in there. Okay, ready? Here we go. Pop. <gasps> it bubbles up. So I take this off. It's yeah, not, and screw it. It's not gonna. There you go. Put this on. Blue cap up. There you go. Okay. And then shake for five seconds. And then put it in your bag. And then put it back in the box, and the oh. box is the mailer. Oh, look. It's got a seal strip. Oh my gosh. That's handy. Look how cute. So it's got so a peel here right a, there. It's got a peel strip. So you put this on, you peel the same box it came in. How ecologically friendly is that? And you seal it. Oh crap. I didn't put the little things in. <laughs> oh, the little tabs. Little, put the little tabs in first. Don't be an idiot. There you go. And this is already mail, already addressed and stamped and ready Exempt to go. Exempt human specimens. A <laughs> We have our two boxes ready to ship. And when we get the results. In six to eight weeks. That long. That's what it says. Six to eight weeks. In six to eight weeks, we're going to open our results on camera, right? If that's what you say. <laughs> okay. All right, so wish us luck. Irish, Irish, or Scottish, right? That's what we're voting for. So we're back and we have the results from both Ancestry.com and 23andMe. We got the Ancestry.com ones a while ago. A couple yeah, of weeks they ago. both said six to eight weeks, but Ancestry's came in more like about four weeks. Yeah, really fast. And then we just got these a few days ago for 23andMe. Since Sam is not adopted, he's gonna go first because he knows a lot of his heritage already, so it's not a super big surprise. And I have to tell you, he actually looked at his Ancestry.com once. He came and he said, I got mine. I said, yeah, I got mine too. And I said, we, we'll do the reveal when we do the vlog. He said, oh, I already looked. <laughs> so, so he's not going to be super surprised about this, but he's going to pretend to be surprised. And then the 23 me, he has not looked at those. So, you're on, babe. 
Most of my DNA comes from the England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe region. That includes most of England and Wales, not Scotland or Ireland, includes northern parts of France, Belgium, Holland, the western part of Germany. My England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe is 75%, <laughs> so I'm mostly English. Nearly pure. Norway counts for 12%, Sweden 6%, so that makes me 18% Norwegian Swedish. Ireland and Scotland is 7%. Now why did you say that last? Because it's more than Sweden. Well, because Norway and Sweden are the same for me because I have, so when I look at my ancestry, my father's side are both English, Smith and Thomas. They're both English and English back a few generations. So I'm not surprised that I'm pretty much 50% English, right? Just from my father's side. My mother's side, my mother's MacArthur, which is Scottish, that's her father, but her mother is a Johnson and she's Swedish. So I'm thinking that since the Norway region overlaps half of Sweden, that Norway and Sweden are really the same. Most of my ancestors are Mountain West Mormon pioneers, which, which is not a surprise. And then if I go back to the front page, they give me my DNA matches. I have 1,000 plus fourth order cousins or closer who I match my DNA matches with in the Ancestry.com database. Everybody. So, <laughs> so I have a bunch of people. We're probably fourth cousins. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so anyway, so that's, that's Ancestry.com. Okay. So now we go to 23andMe, me, which I have not looked at. And, they, and so they have the health and the ancestry. So I don't know if I want to want, want to look at the health, health part. That scares me. Yeah, That's... I think their maps are different. They group um, British and Irish together. According to their grouping, I'm 54% British and Irish. I'm 16.3% Scandinavian. They show me Denmark. I'm 15.2% French and German, which would overlap the British one on the ancestry. 13.8% broadly Northwestern <laughs> European. And I have a 0.1% <laughs> Sub-Saharan Africa. Woo! So. Something cool. We got something, something cool happening. Something there. going on there, right? <laughs> so I got some little marker. Sub-Saharan Africa. So there Something you go. not European, honey. You're not European. So I'm 99.9% European. We pulled up mine on the screen and I haven't looked at it and he's peeked at it just while he's been pulling it up, I can tell. So pull this over and I'm not looking. I'm terrified. I'm seriously terrified. I'm seriously scared. It's not what I thought. It's really not what I thought. That's so bizarre. Are. It's not super surprising though. Well, I don't know. That's not what I thought. So mine is 50% England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe. 50%. Where'd my red hair come from? And 41% Germanic Europe. You're a German. <laughs> and only 6% Ireland and Scotland. That's less than you. <laughs> but you could have got your still could have got your red hair from that. Although, and 3% Swedish, but that's so bizarre. Ireland is only 6% Germanic Europe. So that's the center of Europe. That's so the center of Germany, weird. yeah. Germany? It goes out to the Netherlands, Belgium. In the Netherlands, my father, it's really Holland. My father served a religious mission in Holland when he was 19, till he was about three, almost three years. Ireland, Northern Ireland, just a little bit of me. And then it says, Migrations, Mountain West Mormon Pioneers. Me too! There we go. DNA results summary. Okay, <gasps> okay don't, 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 don't. It says I have a thousand plus fourth cousins or closer. I don't, that scares the heck out of me. Close family, first cousin, holy cow. Are you serious? Yeah. Don't say that. It, it says I have three... Well, these are, these could be sisters. These could be sisters and brothers. They're close family, not just first cousin. You want to click on that one? No, I don't. Close family to first cousins, extremely high. Okay. 
Okay, before I do that, I vlogged about my adoption story before, and I don't know if I want to know this stuff, because I have a family, and I've always, I love my family, and I'm very close to them, and I don't, they are my family, but these people are blood relatives, I don't, I just don't know what to do with it. Okay, I'm not going to say the names, because I don't know if that would be like a privacy invasion. Okay, so I've got three listed as close family. Two, Notice these all have say, the last name. These two have the same last name. This one too. An extremely high first cousin, it's close difficult. family, and then one guess at first cousin, a bunch of second cousins. Three people that are listed as close family. Now one thing that's interesting is there's three people listed as close family. Two male, one female. The female has a different last name, but that could just be a married name. The story I have told, I was told about my birth family was that my birth mother had a child before she was married and gave that child up for adoption. Then got married and had children, multiple, I don't know how many, and then I was born after her divorce. So that would actually fit that profile. That's all it really says. So if you wanna find out if I ever contact my extremely likely close relatives, ring the bell and subscribe so you'll find out when I do that vlog. So, do 23 and me. Oh, I like this one better. Yeah. <laughs> this is 42.8% British and Irish. Woo! And then 29.9 French and German. 14.9 Scandinavian, specifically Denmark. 11.4 broadly Northern European. So that would be Northwestern European. So that would be German. And 0.4% broadly Southern European and 0.6% broadly European. I don't have any African. I got nothing. I was really, really hoping for like melanin. <laughs> Something cool, but I'm like, I'll, I'll put up a screenshot. I literally am like, right there. That's all I got for you. Caffeine consumption likely to consume less. A deep sleep, less likely to be a deep sleeper. That's accurate. Lactose intolerance, likely tolerant. Muscle composition, common, common in elite power athletes. Whoa. Okay, so we did it. I didn't cry. I even had tissue in case, and I didn't cry. So I think I like the 23andMe a little bit more because it does say I'm more Irish. <laughs> But the other one says Scottish and German was weird. That was weird. The relatives thing kind of freaks me out. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Figure that out. See if I decide to do anything. Not really sure. If you're adopted and had a DNA test, comment below and tell me what you found out. So we just finished the vlog in the other room. We came into my office and I was showing my kids some of the results we found and joking around and laughing about things. For example, I am likely to have no unibrow and I'm more likely to have misophonia, which I do. And at least one of my kids does too, so yeah. Look it up. We were just messing around in here and looking at different things and I went on to 23andMe on the website. I, I added in some settings that I hadn't set in before, not realizing that 23andMe also had a way to look at uh, DNA connections. And when I got on that page, they had to have a page for DNA relatives but it says half sister and that kind of freaked me out but even more so when I went to this woman's page and she has written on her page I'm hoping to find my older half sister from my father's first marriage who was born after their divorce and adopted by another family and it actually took me a second after I read that, it, it, like I had to process it, like I'm kind of thinking through, like what did it say, what did it say? And because that is the story that I've been told that I was born after the divorce of my biological parents. And so apparently this woman was born to my biological father in a subsequent relationship or marriage and she's looking for me so she knows about me and she's looking for me and I, I didn't I didn't know if I wanted to do this before 
but seeing that she's written about me <clears throat> and is looking for me, I, I of course I'm gonna respond. So, here it goes. Okay, so I, what do you say to someone who's biologically related to you and you've never met them and you're 54 years old? I don't even know what, I don't even know. So is this too personal? Is it too impersonal? I just said, oh, I think I'm the half sister you're looking for. I just opened my DNA results tonight. I was adopted and was told that my biological parents were divorced before I was born. So here's the, the weirdest thing is that I'm the baby of my family and this woman is younger than I am, which is super strange to think that I have like a younger biological sibling. That's super strange. Okay, you ready? Click send. I mean, what if she, what if she doesn't check 23 me. I don't even know when she ever wrote that. Okay, I'm gonna click send. Send. The next morning, I wake up and I do my normal morning stuff, my workout, and then I go get on the computer. My expectation was that if Holly got the message, that whenever Holly got the message on 23 me, and if she responded, that it would probably send me an email or something. So I was thinking I might get an email message at some point and it could be months away. So I wasn't really like, I'm looking for this. And I went on Facebook and I had a message request. It was from a very kind, sweet woman. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I, I don't even have all the pieces in my head together very well. It's so much new information and it was so fast and so unexpected. I'm still trying to process it. I'll just kind of quickly give you the big pieces. The woman who messaged me is the stepmother in my biological family. So after my birth parents divorced and then I was born, at some point after that, this woman who messaged me married my birth father. They had nine children. Nine children. So I have nine biological half-siblings. Apparently, he searched for me until he died in 1994. And that is why Holly was looking for me. She'd always known I existed, and she felt like she needed to like carry that out for her father, that she needed to continue the search for on his behalf. And I thought that was really sweet and kind of a lovely thing that she did. I also thought it was really kind the way the stepmother approached me and talked to me and welcomed me and everything. She has no biological relationship to me and my only connection to her is that it's her husband's past marriage. So she has no obligation to treat me with such kindness and, and she did and she, just, just a very lovely, very lovely lady. That information all just kind of came really fast in a big, you know, in a big dump and just really took me by surprise. Within a short time, a couple of the half siblings and then a spouse of another half sibling messaged me. And then I got a message from my full biological sister. And I have a full biological brother. And they're three and four years older than I am, if I remember, and I believe the brother's the oldest. There's just a lot of information all at once. The brother lives in another state. He's alive, but has some health issues that have resulted from a traumatic brain injury. The biological sister lives in another state also, different other state. I, I don't wanna to give too much information because I guess it's private and I don't wanna speak out of bounds about other people. Basically, Monday and Tuesday were spent messaging back and forth with different family members, with people sending me pictures, telling me different information and asking bizarre, weird questions that are, are related to biology and stuff like that. So right now, that's where it is. The stepmother has said, we would love to meet you, but I know this is overwhelming, so you say the word and we'll leave it up to you. I just thought that was such a kindness because they've known about me their whole lives. Some of them at least have looked for me, continued to look for me. And I didn't know they existed until two weeks ago. It's just a lot of information. 
and they've all just been super kind. At least a few of them, the stepmother and at least two of one half brother and one other half sibling live in the same county I live in, in Utah. So I have spent quite a bit of time speaking with my biological sister, the stepmother and multiple half siblings. At some point I asked, I said, so my birth mother, like, has she also passed? And no, she has not. I was told that she is alive, living in a different country right now, or at least visiting a different country. So I have not spoken to her. I have not contacted her. I do know her name. I have seen, I have been given pictures of her and told some things about her. I'm gonna leave that in her court. My birth mother's sister, so a biological aunt, messaged me also, or con you know, I spoke to her on Facebook. I'm sure someone will at some point tell her that they know who I am or they've spoken to me. I'm just gonna let that play out however it does. It's interesting to me to like, oh, I, I actually, like there's a name, which is kind of bizarre. Like I have a name for these birth parents and I know what they look like. It is really odd how much I look like my birth mother and how much I look like my biological sister. That's crazy to me because I've never experienced that before. I've just never experienced looking like people except my own children and they don't look that much like me. Really with my birth mother, okay, here's the thing. Look, I'm just gonna be straight up here. If I had had an unwanted pregnancy for whatever reason and had determined the best thing to do was to give the child to a family to adopt, I can understand wanting to just move on from that. It's difficult, it's painful, it's trying. There's a a lot of physical and emotional stuff that goes into that. And I can completely understand, I just wanna put that in the past and I just wanna go on with my life and not have to relive that or redo that or revisit that or whatever. I can also understand birth parents who always want to know like what happened with the child and how they are and how they turned out and all that stuff. So I can kind of understand both sides of that. My feeling is that she probably wants to move on and just, not go there. She's elderly now, obviously, because I'm almost elderly, and I'm completely okay with that. I know to some of you that will seem odd, and I'm honestly, I feel a little bit sad that I know people, I know adoptees who are looking for their biological families and long to have that connection, and they've tried and they can't. I personally know some. And then here I am like not really wanting to go there and then it just all came in a day. I'm sorry, I don't know how that happened. So I know who my biological mother is, I know her name, and I know how I could contact her if I was so inclined, but I'm not going to. If and when she hears about me, if she decides to do that, I'm open to that, but I don't wanna force that. I'm okay with her living the rest of her life without ever making a connection with me. I really am. It's weird. I don't, I don't know how to explain how I feel about this. It's been cool to connect for the first time with people I vaguely sort of knew about and with a whole bunch of people I had no idea existed. That's what happened with my DNA test. Okay guys, I'm gonna just stop talking about this because I don't even know what to say because I don't even really know what I think about it. It's just crazy. If you do have questions about the process or anything, go ahead and ask me. I'll answer any that aren't too personal or inappropriate. And I really hope you have a super great week. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you've ever had a DNA test and if you found out anything that surprised you. See you all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.